Howdy folks, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Figure This Thing Out. On this edition, we're actually going to go ahead and start building ourselves a map. We're going to take the everything we've learned, everything we put together from 1 and 2, plus a couple other things that I just keep forgetting to mention, and we're going to start building some maps. Going to show you here how quick and easy it is to bang them out, and we will go from there. But first, there we are. Uh, you know what? Something else still missing. Ah, there we go. Okay, now let's get into it. All right, so we're back on our first test model map where we have a bunch of crap all placed around. It just looks like a mess. You notice the ground is all carved up, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to why it looks like that in a couple few. But let's go ahead and open ourselves up a new map here. New. And we will get to some of these uh, nice prefab maps. We'll take a look over them and see some of the things that are possible. But for starters, let's go ahead and choose our blank map. Let's go with a nice medium size. Give me a little room to work with. And we're going to call this our first map. And now this is a real nifty feature right here. You can change the starting color of the map itself. As you see, they all sort of come in in that uh, sandish sort of color. It looks sort of gray on my screen here. Well, let's say you prefer a nice little grassy field. There we go. I like that color shade. So we're going to go ahead and apply that, create our map, and boom. Now we've got this lovely shade of green. Oh, that just looks gorgeous. Just like a freshly mowed lawn. Ain't that nice? All right, now, here's another little thing I like to put on. I've recently been informed of right down here. You will find show camera pivot. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And now we've got this little pointer here, which we can't seem to get closer or further away from. This indicates where our camera is focused at any given point. Having this on is a real lifesaver for me. I had a lot of trouble pivoting around specific points, zooming in and out in exact areas. It was just very tricky to figure out where exactly my camera angle was. Since somebody told me about that, now we're, we're locked in. So we can go ahead and move that around wherever we need. Also, if you want to place it somewhere specific, go ahead and put your pointer right where you need it. Hit Shift F, and boom, that's our new focus point. And we can even go page down a little. There we are now through the surface, and we can set it down in here somewhere if we needed to. For instance, if you make a <clears throat> large, tall map, you can actually carve huge chunks out of it and make essentially a cavern. There's a prefab map of that that I'll show you a little bit later, but let's go ahead and get started here. So we'll switch over to building mode. Got our little hammer. Let's see here. First things first, I don't know about you. Shrink this down. I always like waterfront property, personally. So I'm going to come back up here to my terrain manager. Let's see, sculpt. That's a decent side. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. And we're going to want to decrease. We want to take away mass. And then I... Well, let's get some strength here. There we go. And I am just going to carve a winding little river. May not look like a river at the moment, but trust me. Okay, now, this is another little thing I like to do since you see all the blocks every pixel is now green we're going to shrink this down just a little turn off sculpt we're going to turn on paint i'm going to find myself a nice little blue let's see a little bit darker than that there's there's a hold on oh yeah there's a nice shade of blue we'll apply that and we'll just go very carefully right through the carve Look at that. Now we got ourselves a beautiful blue, blue, blah, blue basin to start with. Now, you can leave it this way, 
<clears throat> it looks fine as is. As you see, it, it shows up rather nicely, although I could color in the sides a little bit more. Or we can go ahead, close this, pull back up our props. We're going to look for some water. Not the tiles. There we are. Boom. All right, so let's drop this in. Shrink you down a little. And we're going to pull up our controls. I would like to point out all of these controls do correspond to the number keys. So the select mode, number one. If you want movement mode, here, let me click on this. So there's number one. There's number two. Number three is your scaler. And number four. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think I picked up the wrong one. All right, so let's go ahead and control Z. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, let me try this again. So we want to rotate. Pull up on my view a little bit. And we want our scaler. Let me, I keep forgetting to just use the number buttons. There we are. Look at this. Almost. A little bit further. Let's go ahead and move it. Number two. All right. Number three. Let's shrink it down. Just try to get it to fit a little bit better. Well, I don't know how precise I'm going to get it because I have it off angle. Let's go ahead and number... Four. There, see, I'll remember this sooner or later. That looks about off. <laughs> Can be a little tricky to get that spin right. Okay, there we go. Actually, that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead back to number two. We're going to drop this down a little bit lower. And boom. Boom. Now we have water in our little stream there. Okay, so regardless of which side we're going to put our little house, we're going to need a way across. Let's go ahead and look for a nice little bridge. I know there's some nice looking stone ones. As you see, they come in a couple variations. So you've got a regular and then you've got snow covered doing a snow map again you can change the atmosphere you can change your lighting time of day you can change the weather you can make it raining snowing so let's go back to our bridge here I know there's a nice there's a couple of nice curved ones there we go look at that nice little thing huh so let's drop that in always like to shrink this back down so it's out of the way all right Yep, we're going to need to move it, rotate, do do, back to movement, let's drop her down a little, and boom, there, now we've got our way across, okay, come back up, let's find ourselves a nice little house to live in, shall we? Not too big, not too small, not too flashy, but not too plain, you know what I'm saying? Wow, look at, look at the list here. I mean, that is just an enormous list. That is insane. <clears throat> All right, I think I saw a nice one down here. Well, those are barns. I don't want to live in a barn. I already do. Let's try just generic house. Oh, that's sweet, isn't it? There we go. Shrink our window back down. All right, hold on. My house is a little... There we go. We want to face our bridge. Just so it looks nice and inviting. And I like to drop in a character. Just for scale. Just so I know what I'm looking at. Let me go ahead and pull up. Boom. Boom. Shrink you back down. So this way, it, when I'm dropping in pieces and they come in different sizes, I can get a good sense of where I need to scale them to based on the size of the character. As you see, this house is perfect. That works out just fine. Okay, we'll pull on back. Now let's see here. 
we're going to need some features around our home, so I bet we do a bit of farming. So let's see here. We're going to need some fencing. Because no farm is complete without some fencing. Back to all. This way I can find them easier. Do do. What's that? It's not bad. Wood blockade. I just want a basic farm fence. Zoom in a little. That is kind of small. All right, so let's go ahead, open back up our options. Let's do this next one. Let's scale it up a little bit, 1.5. And let's see what that does for the fence. There we go, that's a little bit better. What do you look like, sir? See, that's, uh, that's not too bad. All right, so let's go ahead, scale that up further. We're gonna go with a two. Give me the fence. Oh yeah, there we go, that's nice. Let's go back over. Let's turn on our multi-place. Snap to floor. And let's do some grid snapping. Yeah, we'll start at a half. So let's see here. Got our fence. Let's just attach it to the house. Boom. There's our little farming area. Now, you can leave it fairly blank, or you can really go to town with decorations here. So let me just show you real quick. Let's just go ahead and see if we can't find any. There we go, we've got some corn stalks. Now first, I wanna go ahead and turn on Where is it? Yes, random rotation. We're gonna crank Y up through the roof. Again, this is gonna rotate the starting position of the plant on the Y axis, which is your straight up and down. So let's go ahead and just find a nice corn plant here. Boy, that thing is enormous. We are gonna need to change that scale. We had it up a little high. <laughs> still had it up at two. All right, that is still pretty big for an ear of corn. Let's try. 0.75 that's a bit more respectable for an ear of corn we still have grid snapping on and in fact we're going to change it we're going to change it down to the 0.25 this way our corns end up right close to each other actually we should have stayed with 0.5 a little bit further spacing perfect perfect Perfect. Although I did drop one off to the side. All right, there's a gorgeous little row of corn. We can even space it out a little bit further if we are so inclined. A little more professional looking. And as you see, because we have the rotating on, they should be, yep, they're changing their angles. They're rotating around that central Y axis. Now, if you really want to add some flair, give it a bit more realism, we'll come back up here to our terrain sculptor, turn off paint, turn sculpt back on. I'm going to make sure we're back up to add mass. We're going to shrink this down. Yeah, you can't go all the way down or it will stop working. Just won't. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Perfect. 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 And all we're doing now is making ourselves a little raised row. Then we'll go back to our corn, and the corn can go perfectly right on this little raised piece of land. Get down there, take a look. 
See, there we go. Added just a, just a touch, just enough. Gives it a bit more sense of realism. And we want to just go on top of that. Go back to painting. See what kind of brown we can pull up. There we go. That's pretty nice brown. If you don't mind, sir. Thank you. A little bit bigger. Just a touch. Slowly trace. Slowly trace. We now have ourselves a raised row. Look at that. Just a little extra touch of realism. Makes it look nice. And if you really want to get into your detail, as you see, we have a nice manicured lawn. By the way, I'm hitting F4 to go ahead and make everything disappear. It's a good way to get uh, filming done. Just make sure to turn off your camera pivot point. Again, that is the escape key, just under general right down here show camera pivot turn it off little symbols gone open back up click and there it is again f4 everything else disappears perfect as i was saying if you really want to get into it we have our nice manicured lawn here let's just look up some grass now these are large patches that are good for filling in but you really want to get into this make sure this is all set up the way we had it we're gonna get this back to a uniform of one we're gonna grab some random grass here zoom in so you can see let's go ahead and change our grid snapping so we get a little bit closer we'll go with half for now there's our grass, and boom, boom, boom. Now you can really start decorating areas. Let's see here, we'll open that back up. Let's go ahead and drop that down to point 25. Grab a different patch of grass. It says shrub, and these, look at that, will drop right in between. And there, now you've got overgrown lawn. That's texture. And as you see, there are a few different types. We have this. And we've got some with some pretty flowers going on. This is just a big old generic patch. But, oh boy, look at them all. Some more grass. And, ah, there's a nice little cover a whole region at once. Look at that. And since we have it rotated, we can essentially drop two or three on top of each other and they all change the way they're facing. And there you go. Now we have ourselves a little more richness, a little more texture. Definitely looks alive. Okay, so back over this. Still looking a little naked though. Let's find us some trees. Let's find some really nice looking. What do we got here? That's a tiny tree. We want some big trees. We're on some big, giant, leafy trees. What do we got here? Clump of birch trees. There we go. We'll just drop that back here. Oh, that looks nice. A little. There we go. Little house next to the woods. Let's get some other. Let's see. Let's see another clump here. Oh, look, some pines. So we'll go ahead and just. Oh, that is nice. You no, know, we need some farm animals, I think. Let's see here. Some sheep. We got any sheep? Look at that. We got sheep. We got some sheep. And how about cows? We got any cows? There we go. There's a cow. And let's put a couple of these. There's some big cows. And then what farm isn't complete without some chickens? Chickens! Let's go ahead and give them their own little... Look at that. Boom. Now, you got animals. Of course, you're going to need some hay for them. So let's go ahead and stack up a few bales here. In fact, I'll drop one right on top. Let's just zoom back in. Oh, hold on here. Shift F. It moves right over to it. Uh, number two on this bad boy we're gonna lift you up whoa 
Wrong click. <laughs> All right, zooming in so I can get a good look at what I'm doing. I still have grid snapping on, so you see it is sort of a little choppy as it moves, but voila. A couple of hay bales. Not bad, not bad. Drop a few out here. There we go. Big old hay pile for you. All right, now this is coming together really fast, really quick too. So as you see, it's pretty easy to throw together a quick map, setup, diorama, scene, whatever it is that you need. You can throw them together pretty fast, pretty quick, and they still have decent results. You saw I just slapped together a lot of these farm assets and boom, we've got ourselves a place. And you see, it's all very easy, quick and simple if you just need a simple scene for your players to work with or if you just like making scenes I've really got to say if you're in the building if you enjoy the Sims if you enjoy a lot of uh, survival titles that allow you to craft and build and upgrade and so on and so forth this program really kinda is a dream come true I mean you can just stay in build mode Till the cows come home or until you put them on the map whichever comes first and as i've shown you can get as loose or as detailed as you want with this i mean you've got grass assets stone all different types of wood bushes homes you've got different types of fences bridges these are just things that i'm throwing out here there's there's so much more that you can really go through and in fact I think looking at some of the other maps might be a better way to explain some of the possibilities here so this is just a map thrown together to really give you an idea of the things that can be done uh, here you see this is sort of the same setup let's go ahead and pull this over really got to remember to use the shift F a bit more but see this is sort of the same basic scene we put together there's the grass that you saw before. Here they've gone and uh, it looks like they dug out the ground and placed in, what is that? Let's see here. That is a grave. <laughs> well, you can multi-purpose these assets. I mean, this one over here to the right, this slab of long stones, as it looks like, is in fact a rock cliff pillar meaning that when you spawn it in let's see here rock cliff pillar if we spawn this in yep it should be standing up so what they did is simply laid it down on its side and scaled it to fit the map and they've got a little guy down here drinking away although they've got him floating on a piece of grass um, well, you know, teach his own, I suppose. We slide over a little bit. There is a working water wheel. I've been playing with it to add some gears and whatnot, give it some real life. I will cover what I've learned, anyhow, of animation in perhaps the next video or one after that. I'm not certain yet, but I will go over animation. That is fun, the things you can get this to do. Here we've just got some basic characters. These are some more pieces dropped in. They've done their own watering. I would like to point out the water, if I'm not mistaken, can you tint the water? I wanna say you can. I wanna say I tinted the water once, but perhaps I'm losing my mind. Let me continue. Will you get off? <laughs> Shrink you back down. Here we go. Shift F right to the middle. Spin around here. Here they've added in some stone pieces. Shift F. And they've built up this back area. They've carved out a huge chunk and built up. This is all map material basic. Now this is real nifty what they've done. Let's go ahead and turn this building it onto the side as they did adding mass adding stone assets what they've done is made a little cave setup and you don't even have to use the cutout controller 
which I've I've covered briefly. I may I may go a little more in depth, see what we can really do with it. But yeah, they've put together this awesome little sort of dwarven cave here. Let me pull back over. They got a garden. Let's see, they've used graves to make it look like raised beds. You can go ahead and do it however you wish. Here we've got just a little sort of magic scene set up here. We've got skeletal frames, a bunch of beautiful glowing crystals, and we've got ourselves a portal. That's always nifty. And then I really like this. So what they've done is this scene over here is sort of spooky setup. Oh, look, I didn't even notice there's crystals they put down in the water. Nice touch. But we've got this real spooky scene here, and this is my favorite part. Let me go ahead and page up. So what they've done is they've spawned in a few assets. We've got, what is this, just a basic chains? And we've got here rocks. And once spawned in, like anything else, these items can all be manipulated. So let's go ahead and switch over to movement. So once they're spawned in on the map, you can go ahead and do whatever you want with them. Control Z. These chains were, yep, they were scaled up slightly, moved around and repurposed. And now you've got this really great scene where it looks like you've got things floating up into the air. I mean, if you're into just making small scale, it doesn't even have to be small scale. If you're just into making really cool looking scenes, let me get rid of this stuff. See here, show camera pivot off, F4. I mean, just look how cool this is to just look at. Like I've said, this, this really is somewhat of a builder's dream. If you just enjoy putting this sort of stuff together, this is a nifty program. All right, so let's go ahead, check out a few other maps here. Okay, so what we have here, it's a pretty small map. They didn't make it very large. Scale ourselves in a little bit. No, oh, let's put on our pivot point so we know where we are at all times. Okay, so what they did is they started with a normal size depthness on their map and then they just quite literally carved out where they wanted this tunnel to be. So you're looking right down and they've really decorated it nicely. They didn't go overboard, they went nice and simple, but it's tasteful. We've just got all these beautiful glowing crystals all over the place. Shift F, there we go. This is a nifty little touch. Look at this here. Let's go back over to our builder's menu. What have we got? This is just a gem. So it's got this, what are you? There we are. It's a caliper. So what they've done is they've really scaled it up, flipped it over. They've inserted a gem into it. Got this cool floating flame effect. Let me see here. Yep, there we are, a large fire. That is really nifty. Oh, wait, let me get rid of that. That is just really cool. Pull ourselves back again. All right, so let's check out another map. Here we are. And this is a much larger map. Now, as you see, as I've explained in a previous video, you can add assets and set them outside of the map itself. So what they've done is they've added this structure, blah, blah, blah. they've added these structures in the background to give you, whoop, right through the wall, a really nice sense of detail, of depth. I mean, that really looks like the city continues to expand for quite some distance. And here you see we've got some more sci-fi aspects going on. That, that's not what I wanted. We got here just a bunch of people standing around, robots, some vending machines. I like that platform there floating. I don't know why it's floating. Why are you doing that? Because you look like you're connected with platforms. But what do I know? Here we've got the inside of 
Uh, looks like a little security center. Something of that nature. This is nifty. I haven't looked at all of these before. This one's really interesting. Let's see here. Just never know what's been set to be activated with a trigger or not so you can move it. All right, let's check out another map. Oh, wow. That's, that's a solid opening right there. These really cool spark effects. Biohazard, okay, maybe I shouldn't have been as enthused about standing where I was. So this one doesn't have any characters walking around in it yet. It's just sort of blank. Again, showing off the various assets. Oh, wait, there's some people, I think. Nope, just some motorcycles that look like people. Although, maybe they're hover bikes. Why are their engines going? That doesn't seem very healthy. But again, so if high fantasy isn't your thing, there are a bunch of sci-fi pieces, a bunch of different types of assets. There also is, from what I understand, what is referred to as kit bashing, where instead of having a whole asset, for instance, say a rifle, you actually put it together using various different parts, assembling it the way you want it to look. I'm not super familiar with it, but it is interesting. So you can customize your own equipment quite a bit, given how many pieces are here. Oh, that, that doesn't look like a place I want to go. This is drugs, zubs, and blurg. This does not, this, you know, this looks like a really bad medical office. I, I, I don't know if we should be here. This does not seem safe. Whoops. Yeah, I've done that before. All right, we're, we're just going to... Yeah, I'm going to... Hold on. Shift F. There we go. That's a bit better. All right, let's check out one final map. I really like snow-covered areas. More of a winter person. Oh, they've gone with a hex map for this one. So a hex grid instead of the standard square grid that we were seeing. Again, they've got very large, probably overscaled. No, not even overscaled at all. But we've got very large assets hanging off the edge of the map, giving it more depth of realism, a bit more 3D feel to it. They don't have the snow turned on, though, but they are using, as you see, a lot of these pieces come in both snow and unsnow covered versions. So they've simply slapped all the pieces in here they could find <laughs> that fit. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, he was having a problem there. Let's see here. Just to make it look nice, let's go ahead and make it snow. Just a little. Just a little snow. There we are. See? Isn't that a nice little touch? Let's go ahead and zoom in right here on this camp. And look at the view that we get treated to here. That really is just nifty. That is. And that should do it for this episode. Hopefully I've helped you out here a little bit. And uh, with any luck, I'll see you in the next one. So until then, you take it easy.